Hi, I'm Conor Houghton, and this is the first lecture in the Probability and Combinatorics section of Mathematics for Computer Science A. The business of this lecture will be introducing probability. What is probability? Well, probability theory is a set of mathematical uh, definitions along with uh, consequent axioms, theorems, etc., that are useful for reasoning about randomness and uncertainty. Uh, at its most familiar, we work out probabilities. So say you have a coin and uh, it's a fair coin, so equally, each side is equally likely to turn up. Then the chance of uh, flipping it or spinning it and getting a harp is one in two. What's the chance of getting six harps in a row? Well, if we assume that each of the spins is independent, it would be a half by a half by a half by a half by a half, well, six times, and that's a probability of 0 0.015625. So that's uh, an example of working out probabilities. Um, what these probabilities are and what we do with them uh, is another question. You know, as far as probability theory is concerned, we'll have a definition of what the probability is, how we apply it uh, to, to real world problems. Uh, that's often a more complicated uh, problem. Uh, one example of how we apply probability theory is frequent statistics. That's the uh, science, or some might say the art, of making deductions about real-world situations uh, from data. So here's an example. Um, a gambler wants to know if uh, a coin is fair and flips the coin six times in a row and gets six hearts. The, coin might, the, the gambler might then reason the chance of that happening by chance, by happening randomly, is only 1.5% of the calculation we did just a second ago. And so uh, the gambler can therefore be 98.5% certain that the coin is not fair. And in frequency statistics, 95% uh, is usually taken as the threshold for significance or um, certainty. Of course, uh, frequency statistics can be very uh, tricky. Uh, in this example, uh, you know, the uh, six uh, harps in a row is an unusual uh, event and if the gambler beforehand had said well I'm going to uh, test to see whether uh, the coin comes up six harps in a row then their reasoning would be correct but you know uh, six harps in a row isn't the only unusual outcome six heads in a row would have been pretty weird uh, heads harps heads harps heads harps might have looked weird as would have harps heads harps heads harps heads but once you have a list of four possible weird outcomes then the chance of getting a weird outcome is six uh, six percent in which case by the previous logic, the, the gambler is only 94% certain uh, that the coin is, is unfair. Um, and 94% is uh, beneath the traditional uh, threshold for making a decision based on frequency statistics. So, as I said, one large application of probability theory is this frequency statistics. Uh, you have to be quite careful and sure of what you're doing. You have to set experiments or hypotheses uh, up correctly. And you also, of course, have to work out uh, the probabilities correctly. Frequency statistics are often used by computer scientists, for example, uh, in testing, focus grouping. Uh, you'll hear a lot about it when you do the human computer uh, interaction course. You try to decide whether one way of having people uh, interact with the computer is, is better than another. You have to do a proper experiment to be sure that uh, what you're observing, the, any effect you're observing, it is not just chance. There's another uh, sort of set of ideas around uh, probability theory that are often lumped under the title frequency statistics. This is really where you're using probability theory to not to model something that's random, but something that you don't know. That sounds like a, a, a subtle distinction. And indeed, you know, the theory, the probability theory is the same in both cases, but it is a, a different set of applications. So in this example here, the, the coin example, this is going to be a bit contrived, but we imagine Aoife has spun a coin six times and has written down uh, the six outcomes. Uh, Brendan uh, is interested in the outcome of this experiment. Now, there, the outcome is already fixed. So what Brendan is doing with probability theory is he is modeling his knowledge of the outcome. Now, there are 64 possible outcomes, and as it stands, Brendan thinks each of them is equally likely. And so his model for the outcome of Eva's coin flipping is a distribution of 64 equally likely outcomes. Now, he receives a little bit more information. Eva tells him that all the coins turned out the same each time, or all the flips turn, turned out the same each time. So now Brendan will update uh, his belief about the outcome of Eva's experiment. Uh, it's still uncertain, but he now has reduced it to two possibilities, and each of those possibilities, again, has equal probability. Each will be uh, worth a half. 
So uh, Bayesian statistics, or using probability theory to re reason about, about knowledge, about what you know about something or what you can infer f from something, well, that branch of probability theory is very important in computer science these days too. The uh, machine learning revolution, the deep learning revolution, the way in which computer science at the moment is highly engaged with artificial intelligence has brought it into contact with uh, quite subtle issues uh, in probability theory. Um, machine learning, uh, in principled approaches certainly to machine learning, are often phrased in terms of, of probabilities and many of the quantities you deal with in machine learning, like the, the objective functions such as cross-entropy, are probability theory derived uh, quantities. So now more than ever, but I think always, uh, probability theory is a crucial and important part of computer science. Uh, so to summarize, probability theory is a set of mathematical definitions and theorems that are useful for reasoning about uh, randomness and uncertainty. So we're going to start off uh, with some of those mathematical definitions. They sound uh, quite dry, but we're uh, just setting things up so that we know what we're doing. Once we have things written down mathematically, then we can debate how they apply or how we can use them to model um, either uncertainty or randomness or whatever. So we start off with a sample space. A, a sample space is just a set of possible outcomes. So in the experiment we had before, well, in an experiment we, where you're tossing a coin once, then there's two possible outcomes, uh, heads or hearts. And so the set of outcomes has two elements. Here I've written it as H corresponding to heads or uh, T corresponding to hearts, because hearts are sometimes also called tails. Uh, a different experiments, you might model using uh, different uh, sets of outcomes. So again, we're making a distinction between the mathematical theory, where uh, the uh, sample space is just a set, it can be a set of any objects, and the application that we're going to put the sample space to, or that we're going to model using probability theory. So we're going to now be, so for example, if we were thinking about an experiment where a coin is uh, tossed twice, and we're setting up a probability theory framework for discussing the random event that would occur when you toss a coin twice, well then the possible um, outcomes are heads, 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 hearts, hearts, heads, uh, hearts, hearts. And so we need we have four elements in our sample space. Uh, another experiment uh, might be where we toss two coins and we look at the outcomes, uh, in which case there's only uh, three items in the sample space, both the coins coming up as heads, one coin coming up as heads and the other as hearts, marked here as HT, but the order doesn't matter, and then the third outcome where both, uh, uh, both coins come up as hearts. And so uh, the sample space is just a set of the things that could happen. And it, as far as mathematics is concerned, it's just a set. Uh, those are all uh, finite, uh, discrete examples. Um, often probability theory will deal uh, with larger sample spaces. Uh, there's different ways you can make it larger. One is uh, to keep it being discrete, so the individual outcomes are separate from each other, uh, but it's infinite. In fact, we'll, you do find that changing to an infinite set of outcomes, provided they're still discrete, doesn't change the theory that you use uh, that much. So one example would be um, you're, you're, you're going to toss a coin until uh, you get a head. Well, then the uh, possible outcomes, well, you could get any number of tosses. You might have to do any number of tosses before you um, get a head. Um, and um, they become very unlikely as the number becomes large, but the sample space should be all of the natural numbers, as I've written here. But, you know, if you were modeling, if you were looking and going and finding a tree and modeling how, um, measuring how tall it is, and you want to model that with probability theory, then the outcomes aren't taken from a, a discrete set. They're taken from a continuous set. Um, uh, and so, you know, the heights of trees ranges from a zero to infinity, although, of course, the probability might well go to zero long before then. So maybe uh, the sample space should be some zero to, you know, 200 meters or something, some number where it would be preposterous to get a tree that high. Uh, but either way, the difference here is that the sample space is, is continuous. You can get any, any value. And as I said before, the, uh, the theory, the probability theory for continuous sample spaces is, is different. Um, and we'll look at that uh, later on. Now, the next thing we want to define is an event. So an event is any uh, subset uh, of the sample space. Here I've written as a, as a strict subset, but of course you could probably include the, um, the, 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 the set, the sample space itself. So uh, here's an example. We uh, have a, a dice. The possible outcomes of rolling uh, the dice is the, the values one to six. And uh, an example of an event is the set of outcomes where the number of dots on the dice face is even. So the event of uh, an even outcome would be two, four, and six. And so E there 
is a subset uh, of S, the, the sample space of, uh, of dice rolls. And you might want to do that because you might want to work out uh, the probability of that event. So you might be rolling a dice, um, the sample space of the roll of the dice is one to six, but you're interested in the probability of even, and so you would uh, consider that an event. You need to work out the probability of the event uh, E. Probabilities, well, formally, a probability is just a map from events to the real numbers. So uh, here are a list of the properties that uh, that map has to have for it to make sense when trying to apply it uh, to, to randomness or uncertainty. So uh, what we're doing is we're defining mathematically an object, a probability. It's a map from events to real numbers. And we're going to require that the probability of any event is positive. The probability for the whole sample space is, is one. So any event has to have a positive, um, a positive probability. The probability of the whole sample space is one. Uh, and the probability, uh, this is a more complicated um, property, if two events are non-intersecting. So this symbol here, of course, is the intersection. So if A intersection B uh, is empty, uh, then we want the probability of A union B to be equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. So we want the probability function uh, to be additive ac across uh, events. So if you have, um, one set of events here, another set of events here, the probability of getting this is one of uh, an outcome in this event, plus the probability of getting an outcome in that event, well, that's just the sum of those two probabilities. So for now, this is just uh, a definition, uh, but uh, thinking about it, and we'll see in practice, uh, this is the uh, definition we want to be able to model uh, uncertainty and, uh, and randomness. Uh, related to a probability is the uh, so-called probability mass function. Uh, this is usually denoted with a little p, uh, and it is a map from outcomes to real numbers. So the thing that we had before was the um, a map from events to real numbers. They are called the probabilities. They're denoted with a big P. Uh, the probability mass function is a map from outcomes to real numbers, and it, it has similar properties. The properties of the um, probability mass function are that the probability of any outcome has to be uh, non-negative. So uh, x, little x, is any outcome in the sample space, big X, and that has to be uh, no smaller than zero. And if you sum all the outcomes in the sample space, that has to give one. And so um, these are two uh, different uh, objects we define on sample spaces to do probability theory. One of them, the probability, is defined on events. Probability mass function is defined on outcomes. Uh, people are often quite lazy about distinguishing between these two objects and often it doesn't matter, but they are uh, subtly different and sometimes it does. And you can get from one to the other by saying um, the probability at event A is the sum uh, over the outcomes in A uh, uh, of the uh, little p of those outcomes. And so uh, you can check uh, from the axioms that, these, that, that if you have a probability mass function, that using that to define a, a probability gives you uh, something that satisfies the probability axioms, uh, and the converse is true. So that's just giving some of the definitions. As I said, it's slightly dry, um, but it is the foundation for building up probability theory, and we'll continue with that in the next lecture. Thank you.